good evening. My name is John, and I have the great pleasure tonight to be here with Morgan Gotche. Did I get that right? You did. 100%. Right. Excellent. She is the executive director of the Calaveras Chamber of Commerce, correct? It is, yes. Now, it right. has been, have you been here, is it a year now almost? Is it, what's the... With the chamber, yeah, it's been just over a year now. Very nice, very nice. And, you know, to top it off, I want to say thank you. Thank you for what you've done in the business community. Because I know 2020 has been one of those years that's, you know, beyond explanation. But also, I just, if people have been following, you've been like the Energizer Bunny. And, no, I mean that. And I think that is, um, in spite of all the obstacles and the impediments and stuff, it, the amount of effort and everything that you've put into promoting county and chamber, uh, I thank you. And I, I mean thank that sincerely. So, Thank you very much. Um, I guess to start off a little bit of a who, what, how, um, a little bit on your background, how did you end up at the chamber and how, you know, what, you know, a little bit of that kind of stuff. I ended up at the chamber because I was a member of the chamber mm -hmm. and um, I had my own uh, consultant side business that I was doing and found the value of being involved in the community and getting connected with other like-minded individuals. Right. And so I got to know Stacey Johnston at the mm -hmm. time and also Cheryl Hogue, who was on the board. And mm -hmm. so connecting with them definitely uh, brought me in and tied me in. And uh, what I was doing with consultancy was basically talking to people and coaching and training people in the areas of leadership, communication, and customer service. Got it. So the alignment between what I was doing there and then the criteria for running the chamber just felt like such an effortless combination for it's me. A good fit. So when the role came about, it definitely caught my attention and yeah. thought, this is the right fit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think... Um, the board, and I think they made a wonderful choice. I mean, that's because the, the effort that you've, um, it's been, you know, it's it's pretty, pretty impressive. I have an impressive board that um, is able to hand over the reins, really, and, and let me kind of figure out the way that 2020 rolled out. I think um, our initial conversations when I first came on clearly had nothing to do with what we actually did this last not. year. Yeah. Of course not. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, for Great anybody. All right, as, um, we're, we're taping this now, start of March, and uh, we didn't want to focus a little bit on COVID we talked about earlier, just because hopefully it goes away sooner rather than later. But as far as plans for 2021, are you starting to make, I mean, what are some of the plans for the chamber? I know in, in person versus, versus virtual, we talked to another person that does uh, music stuff earlier today, and they were thinking by June-ish they're going to have some of their you know, they're planning on some concert stuff again. I mean, as far as like chamber mixtures and things, like, when do you think you'll, any idea on when some of those may start? Oh man, if I had a fortune ball right here, <laughs> a crystal ball, um, you know, at this exact moment, a snapshot in time, yeah. if I could tell you that, then yeah. I would already have a list of dates. Well, I guess let's rephrase the question. I know cause that's all going to be based on the state and based on what regulations we have. Um, is, as soon as the state allows, is the plan to go back to normal mixers and that type of stuff as far as, is that, is that the plan? That in, in a new normal sense. Okay. So we are probably always going to have some sort of hybrid offering, meaning that we found a lot of value in uh, the virtual sense of the world um, sure. that we've been living in. And so there's going to be still a lot of trainings, a lot of um, virtual right. meetings right. that will continue. And we'll even probably incorporate virtual options for live events that we'll have in the future so that people that still may feel uncomfortable with being in a larger group can still have the option to participate but right. absolutely oh my goodness fingers crossed prayers salt over the shoulder we will be able to you know this summer have something in person so i can finally see people live again in, in a weird way it's because <laughs> um, i met with a person earlier today that i had met with in a year and it was odd it was it was actually kind of in a weird way, it was kind of like, okay, I'm going to have to get used to this again. <laughs> it does. It takes a transition to be able to not only have um, an in-person conversation right. Right. where your eyes actually adjust, <laughs> it's not a flat screen, but then also just um, getting used to not having a conversation with a mask on. Right. 
um, we have to be careful of our facial expressions, well, I guess. I, it's going to be tough because masks actually make me look better. So that's the, you know, going without the mask again would be, you know, it's, it's, it'll be a rude, it'll be a rude thing to, you know, but anyway, um, as far as how do you think, what are some of the realistic goals for the county, do you, for the count for business community and stuff for 2021? I think, is it, is it, what do you see is, you know, I'm excited about um, a lot of the leadership that we have in play right now, okay. and um, I'll give specific shout-outs to Martin Hubbardy run, um, running the Visitors Bureau, Sandra Hess running the Calaveras Wine Grape mm -hmm. Alliance. Mm -hmm. Both have great visions of bringing outside in and what we can do in a safe way. Right. Um, I think that having a way that Calaveras can still thrive with our, our business but not in some grandiose, excessive way, but on a constant flux of the right kind of visitors, the right kind of people that are coming to enjoy what we have, not to destroy what we have. Understood. And bringing money into yeah. our businesses. Uh, without overwhelming everything, correct? Yes. Yeah, and there was a... Um there was a survey, I think we may have, um, I don't know if you've looked at this as well, there was a survey that was done by the uh, USDA several years ago where it ranked all the counties in the U.S. And one thing we focused a little bit on the pine tree on is of all the counties in the U.S., Calaveras County is the highest ranked non-coastal county in the entire U.S. Oh, that's incredible. And it's I an, it's that. an interesting thing to where the USDA took all of the physical attributes of all the counties. Mm -hmm. And Calaveras County with... Rapid elevation changes. You have you have scenic diversity. You have access to bodies of water for recreation, etc. And we thought it was fascinating. And if you look at um, out of all the counties in the U.S., Calaveras County ranks number fourteen on that list, and it's the highest non-coastal county in the U.S. And I think. Regardless of the political stuff, the COVID stuff, and everything else, I think fundamentally Calaveras County, I think we're going to have a great decade coming up. I really do. And I think, you know, it's, um, you know, people are valuing rural America again. You know, they see, you know, some of that stuff. Um, you know, it's, um, it'll be interesting. At least that's, you know, some of the stuff I see, you know, is, you know, I don't know how that ties into what you're seeing at the chamber. Well, historically, if we look at what happened after the pandemic that we had 100 plus years ago, roaring 20s, we had the baby. roaring 20s. <laughs> and so I think there's going to be a lot of people that are really wanting to get out, be in nature, be with people and and have that sense of community. And so um, any kind of business that's going to be catering to that, I think, is going to find a lot of success yeah. um, in the next coming yeah, 10 yeah. years. Um, as far as the job market here in the county, are you seeing, um, from what are you hearing from businesses as far as what, you know, employment sectors are needing, you know, how, how are you hearing about that type of stuff? Well, there's a lot of need. And okay. um, we... Uh, we have tried to highlight, especially for our chamber members, yeah. um, the positions that they have available. But to be honest, it's a running feed um, that happens. And it's a, a transition, too. There's a number of people that were fearful of, of working, especially in the front lines, um, because of COVID and what it meant for them if they had health problems. And um, it could be just the fear of the pandemic in general. Yeah. But as things kind of transition and hopefully we're getting more people back to work, the struggle still is that we need more people in the county. And um, that's, you know, we have some incredible businesses that are trying to build and we just need, um, yeah, more people. More of a labor force? We need think? a bigger labor force, okay. for sure. Yeah. And we, we got a release, and I don't know if you've been promoting it as well, the... Um, was a new manufacturing company that's coming to San Andreas. Yes. yes. And what little bit, what's their background? Is it roof screen? And yeah. um, you know, I haven't had a chance to meet Lad yet. Okay. But um, that's an incredible opportunity for a Bay Area business coming and bringing manufacturing into um, our county. So they yeah. do what? So like solar panel struts and mounting system. What is it? To, what did they do? Man, I probably should not be the spokesperson okay. for him because Got I it. don't know him, but um, they do actually the roof screens for skyscrapers. Oh. And so, yeah, to, to protect the roof. So, yeah. And so for like bird, sc bird screens and that type of stuff for the yes. top of size skyscraper. Oh, interesting. To my understanding, yes. Ah, yeah. okay. All right. Um, and that was fast because that's going to be, what, 10, 12 jobs? And I know the, initially that they're hiring for... Yes, and yeah. that's that's exactly what we can use more of is, right. is someone that's coming in and seeing um, the need, but then also building 
um, that infrastructure in so we can have more jobs, but then also bringing in all that tax base money too. Right. Um, different segments of the county, I know, um, you know from following this, is each of the different supervisorial districts has a distinct personality. You know, uh, District 3 up Highway 4, West Point. Um, what is your sense of um, needs from the different geographic regions in the county? What are you seeing? Hmm. Wow. Um, that's a really varied question. <laughs> uh, as far as businesses go, um, still support, support in the sense of transitioning, um, um, going from being, doing business as they once did prior to the pandemic right. to transitioning to e-commerce or how to pivot their business enough that it can, um, stand, withstand, not having events or right. going virtual. That's, that's something within the different districts. It's, it's really, well, I guess a, a question to rephrase that a little bit. For example, okay. I know that um, some uh, during last year, Frontier put um, fiber in most of West Point. Mm -hmm. And I, th I believe they even sent some down uh, railroad flat road, almost to, I believe to almost a railroad flat. So all of West Point now can get gigabit fiber. And I was wondering, I mean, as far as tech stuff, because you wouldn't think somebody wanting to put a small tech firm in West Point, because it's not really, you know, but the infrastructure is actually there now. You know, they have, um, you know, as far as some fiber, are you hearing any tech, any type of a tech thing that want to relocate a little bit to rural? Because I know that, for example, all the Caltel's footprint, mm -hmm. um, Copperopolis Town Square has fiber to every, you know, fiber to every, um, every office there. What are you hearing as far as, I guess that's the question, are you hearing any tech any type of thing that would move, you know, relocate a satellite office or anything up here? I haven't heard that specifically, okay. but what I do know is that big tech companies do now have employees that are working remotely, yeah. obviously, yeah. Um, living in Calaveras County, which we're excited about because that attention and um, bringing more um, fiber, obviously, to our county is a huge deal. And we have a lot of telecommunications companies um, that are really working together in our county. We have such a diverse topography here that really challenges well, like you know, the internet. And, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. And so um, working together and really trying to um, increase broadband services, increase internet services here in our county, and that's and that's huge. Yeah. But I haven't heard any specific tech companies transitioning over here. Okay, but um, that's what's one that I thought was fascinating that when Frontier, when they pushed through all the, the fiber throughout, throughout West Point, it was like, it's incredible. that's... That's pretty, I mean, because you don't think of, you know, if you're sitting in the Bay Area, you may not think of, oh, you know what, let's, let's go. The only reason I was thinking about that is the other thing, I guess, the um, is the enterprise zones, you know, the opportunity mm -hmm. zones that were, you know, that was in the early part of the, the Trump administration. West Point area is one of those zones. Mm -hmm. And it's the only area in Calaveras County where you get the capital gains breaks, and you know some of those some of those capital gains breaks can go out for like a decade. Hmm. So now that you would have fiber and a capital gains break, it's an attractive combination. It is. I mean, it really. And I don't know how. Yeah, I mean, that, I don't know as far as a messaging thing. How could we message that? That you know, like, wow, you could get. I mean, some of the, um, some because I think um, Goldman Sachs even did a fund that I think had, I forget how many bill, I think it was over a hundred billion in it. It was looking mm -hmm. for opportunities to invest in enterprise because it was a way to park capital gains for a decade. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, there was some interesting. At least I thought it was interesting. So, yeah. You know, um, I guess a little bit off of it. You've been following um, a lot of the aid programs and incentives for small business. What what are you hearing lately? I know Calaveras County. I mean, is you know, what I mean. What you're on the ed cutting edge of that stuff as far as what's available to aid small businesses now. Cutting edge as much as I can. Um, <laughs> so I was really heavily into all of the IDL, which is the economic. Um, oh my goodness, that's. 
It's criminal. You can tell it's been long enough now that I'm forgetting <laughs> idle already. Economic Injury well, Disaster Loan and the Paycheck Protection Program yeah. early on in the pandemic was really heavily trying to promote that out yes, because that was our first real tickler for everybody. There's funding available. Please get it. You did a great job promoting that. You really did. That you know, PPE available and that kind of, yeah. Which we still have lots of PPE, by the way, at the chamber, so <laughs> give us a call. But, um, yeah, so we hit heavily on that in the beginning, and then there was a lot of just um, concern about what does it look like for the forgiveness portion, and um, here we are nearly nearly a year later, nine months later, yeah. and um, hitting second rounds and hitting now the California Relief Grant Program through right. um, the state. And so with Paycheck Protection Program, I know there's still um, money out there and there's still opportunities for people to contact their bank and, and get the money. Um, but there's a gap and the gap is where um, there's a lot of struggle in that we have a lot of solopreneurs in our county. Yes. A lot of people that are sole proprietors yep. that um, probably are not um, filling out Schedule C's. They're using their own taxes and unfortunately, um, they're really those outliers. And so um, that gap across the United States is a problem, but I think it's especially um, specifically a problem here in Calaveras. And so yes. um, I know that there are some people um, like Kathy Glino, Economic um, Development, and um, some others that are working really hard to bring money into our county specifically for that gap. Yes. And so that's problematic. I know there's a lot of people that were concerned about the California Relief Grant because um, it kind of feels a little bit like first rounds, like very first round paycheck protection program where no one, including the SBA, really had a handle on what was going on. And so um, I know that the um, um, there was just a release out today that they're going into the second round. So anybody that was waitlisted for um, round one and two of the California Relief Grants, they're going back and assessing now. So um, hopefully we'll see more monies in okay. the county. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess this is going to a little bit of a complete segue, but you mentioned uh, uh, Martin at the uh, Visitors Bureau. With his background in uh, the film industry and stuff like that, have you heard anything about any type of productions or any type or any reaching out any type of using uh, Calaveras as a as a location for any of the filming locations? Well, he's brought in some incredible talent just in the form of bloggers into right. our county, which is incredible. Um, he, if anyone can, it's him. Yeah. So, I mean, truly Calaveras is very lucky to have someone of, of that talent and that experience in our county. Um, so I know that he is, is working on it. Right. Um, right now I would imagine the film industry is still trying to find their, their legs and, and figure out what it looks like now moving forward into 2021. Correct. But hopefully... I guess should we tell people, yeah. I guess... Martin um, Hubbardy from the Visitors Bureau, he was one of the producers of Fried Green Tomatoes and stuff. Is Among that, many others yeah, that people have definitely long, watched. Long, yeah. And he's a resident here. This is his family home. Uh, but that, but he's, but he, you know, he has an opportunity to leverage some of those contacts as far as trying to raise Calaveras County's profile. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Yep, okay. Definitely. It's the reason I brought it up. It wasn't. You know, <laughs> but they're like, well, who's this? I probably thought we should explain it a little. Bit. <laughs> um, so he's, what, some of the bloggers, and what's some of the stuff that he's... Yeah, he's brought in people in, basically, to kind of rediscover Calaveras. Got it. And okay. so um, he's allowed um, for some high-profile publications to to really have a glimpse of what Calaveras has to offer. And so bringing them in and allowing the bloggers to kind of um, see, really, the offerings that you were talking about before. Calaveras is so diverse oh, is. in what we have. And so yeah. whether it's, you know, outdoor adventure, wine, you know, the ranches, that you get to see around. I mean, mm -hmm. beautiful ranches. We have incredible oh, country amazing. here. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. It really is. And, you know, and I think one of the things I was bringing, referencing West Point area is because, you know, lots of times people don't visit that area mm -hmm. as much, you know, as some of the other ones. But, like, I live along the Highway 4 corridor, but whenever I have to go to Nevada or something like that, I always go, to, I always do the railroad flat road. Oh, wow. Thing, you know, through yeah. West Point. I always go through West Point. Um, always try to stop at the railroad flat market and get a soda, you know, because... There's some parts of the county that are just gorgeous mm -hmm. that people don't always see, yeah. and it's and they're uncrowded. Yeah. You know, there's, um, you know, that type of stuff. So, um, um, from talking to local businesses, um, what do you sense the mood is out there now? Is it doom and gloom, or is it like okay, 
we're going to, you know, we made it through. We're, this is 20, you know, I know some actually did very well. You know, some actually mm-hmm. had some of their best years. But what are you hearing as far as just the business mood? It's as varied as the business is. Okay. So, um, you know, a lot has to do with mindset. And I, I say that sensitively because um, I, I probably, if anything that I communicate into the community um, is remembered, it's that mindset is everything. And I say that because there are so many times where um, our business owners have been literally stretched where to the point of breakage, and yet they are still somehow able to find that extra energy um, and and really push through into the next month, sometimes even the next day. Yes. And so um, there's there's definitely some frustrations and with lingering, um, you know, regulations, and we're starting to see things open up across the country. So I'm hoping that that becomes a little um, bit. Of an I guess a question: Do you? Do you have an example of one that where they've retooled their business model and actually made this year better than they thought they were going to be able to? You know, who would um, who sticks out in that? Who? You know, I, I hate to always um, highlight the same because there's so many people that are really doing great things, um, but I have to say. Um, Scott Clan from Newsom Harlow is a prime example, yeah. and I actually had an interview with him and Sarah Gray, who owns Better Together Fitness in San Andreas, and I highlighted both of them because they have very different businesses, mm-hmm. but both of them were subject to a lot of regulation over the past year. They're considered oh one of the heavily hit right yes. wineries yep. and gyms, fitness mm-hmm. studios, um, and both of them had incredible... Um, mindsets Mm -hmm. that said from the beginning, we're going to figure out what we're going to do. And so Scott having these awesome tastings regularly on Facebook lives, which are so entertaining, but promoting his business has absolutely been, you know, a great asset to him. And then Sarah, um, bless her heart. I mean, she's, she's tried literally everything and took a lot virtually, um, did, you know, active in the community outdoors, um, things that they could do as a group. So there's one of my favorite stories she has. In fact, I don't even know if she still has the rock in the gym, but she had a painted rock that literally, um, as a fitness challenge, one person would walk it over to the next person's location. So it was a fitness challenge, but it was still so symbolic of we're in this together and we're moving this load, this heavy heaviness and now together. You have the rock now, right? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. I, well, she had it in her gym for the longest time, and yeah. I think it was such a beautiful symbology of, sure. of what was going on. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Scott's done a, a great job with the, the online stuff, and some really, some really interesting interviews that he's done on first some, some of the wine tasting stuff. Yeah. It was uh, nice uh, history stuff of um, there. Um, question is, you know, you had talked about looking forward for the county is the makeup of how we want the economy to go forward. You know, some areas you don't want to overload. What is what is your sense of what? of how the business climate should be for the county is what do you want us, what do you think is the, is a good mix? I know that's probably an odd question, but as far as I know, we've got the tourism centric areas and stuff, I, which some of those, I mean, because some of the stuff in, you know, upcoming, I mean, the amount of the sheer volume of people that have been in some of these regions have been, mm-hmm. you know, it's, there's more, been more people here than ever. But right. um, what do you see as far as, I mean, what are you hearing from people is what do you, what do you think that are healthy, business mix should be going forward? What are you trying to promote for the chamber? Yeah, well, on behalf of the chamber, I can say that um, we are trying to promote, if it's anything externally to the county, that we're looking for a a different kind of visitor. We're looking for one that's um, maybe a visitor that's going to appreciate the the beauty and appreciate um, the culture of Calaveras, and that's going to want to perpetuate that. Um, But also something that I'm looking at specifically and the board's looking at with the chamber is the sustainability portion, meaning um, the labor force is a problem. And um, partnering with Mother Low Job Training is is definitely going to be huge um, for us moving forward. But also looking at how can we support the businesses that are going to be bringing that labor force up. And so not just talking in the tourist um, side, but a lot of like construction, right? Trades are 
heavily impacted right now. Oh, and there's boy. so much opportunity yeah. to have, you know, training within our county. Let's, you know, potentially have the opportunity for people, our kids growing up, to have exposure to those trades that they'll see there's opportunity within Calaveras so they don't have to leave the county. And so that's that's a heavy conversation, and I know I'm not the original. No, of it. and it's and it's a because I my youngest son has decided he wants to be a contractor. Graduated, right. at, you know, last year, and he's decided that he wants to be get his he wants to be able to go for his license by the time he's 22. And I was like, okay, you know, that's a phenomenal. I mean, you know, the, in from him talking to other contractors in the trades and stuff, it's they want to see the next generation because yeah. there was a gap. There were a lot of the, a lot of the fir construction firms and there were some old guys, you know, that they needed the next, they need some next generation. You yeah. know, you need some, yeah, it's, I think the trades are, the trades, I think the trades are an under, underexposed part of the workforce up here because, you know, there's guys can make good money and, Women too, but they, you know, there's mm -hmm. there's money in the trades up here. There's a lot of money in it, yep. and I think having that conversation, it's a transition. I was kind of a millennial, uh, um, right in between Gen Z or Gen X and millennials, but um, you know, still raised with parents saying, you know, you need your college education, right. Right. and so we're kind of morphing into that new phase of where there's incredible opportunities if you're interested in plumbing, electrical, construction, anything, carpentry. There's a massive need here. Um, you talk to any con contractor here that's scheduled out years, mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. and we have a lot of people right now. I mean, I hear conversations from, you know, people new to the county all the time of where can I get a contractor? Right, right. And it was funny as you look at some of the surveys and background and some of the contracting stuff. If you look at happiness and jobs, contractors and um they always rank up really high as far as job satisfaction. They're happy. They're happy. You know, generally they're happy about their craft. They're happy about the trade, and you can't say that for some occupations. That's you true. know, there's they're happy guys. Um, we got a couple minutes left, so if you're looking for your tip, like the 2021 position or statement for the for the chamber, what would you? How would you? What are you looking for? What do you? What would you say? In the last couple minutes. Man, I hate to, to steal this from Howard Schultz at Starbucks, but um, I have a big Starbucks background, and so I have to say the word onward. If I could think of one word to embody what we're doing, because, um, you know, my, it was my freshman year, and I definitely messed up a lot, and I had a huge learning curve, um, and there's so much more that I really want to do. And so um, I'm, I'm trying to do the right thing, do the right work at the right time in the right place. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, trying to understand and hear the gap of what the chamber had maybe in the past or right. making sure not even that of the gap in the past, but making sure that we are um, moving in the right direction. We're moving onward in the right direction for what the culture and, and um, really the feel of Calaveras is going to be over the next coming five yeah. years. Yeah, um, I think there's a lot of opportunities. And again, I want to say thank you for all the energy you put into promoting the county and, the, and its businesses this last year. It's been it's been it's impre been impressive to watch. It has. It's been an honor. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much.